Good morning everyone and welcome to this week's Kids Church. Last week we looked at the first four of the Ten Commandments. Can anyone remember what they are? Well, God appeared to Moses on the mountain, Mount Sinai. The people heard God speaking to Moses and then God gave Moses these rules. Number one, have no gods before God. Number two, do not make and worship idols which are just statues of false gods. Both of these are about worshipping the one true God and not gods that we've created for ourselves and false gods. Number three is don't misuse the name of God. Don't use it as a swear word like lots of people do. Names are precious and shouldn't be mistreated, especially God's name. Number four was about protecting the Sabbath and keeping it holy. We should have one day where we don't do our normal work and just focus on God. It's easy to find distractions and other things to do. The fact is that none of those things are as important as God is and God deserves our worship. Let's join Sandy Beaches and Moses now as they tell us about the rest of the commandments that God gave and see what happened next. Kids Church News. Hello, I'm Sandy Beaches and welcome back to this two-part special where we have Moses telling us about the laws God gave to the Israelites on Mount Sinai. In the first part we heard about the laws not to have other gods, not to have idols, not to misuse God's name and not to do work on the Sabbath but to keep it as a holy day. Today, Moses will tell us what the other rules that God gave them were. Moses, welcome back. Oh, thank you, Sandy. That's always good to be with you. And that's, that's nice to be with you here again now. OK, Moses, let's get straight to it then. What were the next commands that God gave to his people? Well, that was about honouring your mother and father. This one also came that with a promise that if we did it, that we'd have a long life. That sounds hard, though. Well, yes, that can be tricky. I suppose they all can, really. Uh, although, next was that you shouldn't murder anyone. Well, that sounds perfectly reasonable. Maybe not too hard to keep. What was next? Uh, the next one was that you shouldn't take anyone else's husband or wife. And then the next one was that you shouldn't steal things or, you know, take things that aren't yours. All these sound like they are good rules. It helps everyone live together in beautiful harmony. Well, that's right. And the next one does too, you see. That says we shouldn't tell lies about other people. And then after that, that we shouldn't covet. Covet. Covet? I don't think I've heard that word before. Oh, that just means wanting something, what you know, what someone else has got. Being jealous of what other people have and you don't. OK. Were there any more? Well, they were the main, main ten, you see. God spent a lot of time telling me more details on these rules, and I went to write them down. Oh, sorry, I went to tell, down to tell the people, all of them. And they just uh, accepted all the rules and would obey them. I went up the mountain again to tell God that. OK, so then what happened? Well, God gave me the laws on, on these tablets of stone, you see. He'd written them himself on there. Oh, brilliant. Can we see them? You've actually got God's laws written down here now. Well, no, I don't have those exact ones. OK, how come? Well, I smashed them. That was a bit silly. How come? By accident? No, no, that was on purpose. You see, while I was up the mountain telling God, and he was telling me all these instructions about building a tabernacle and how we need to be and all the things to go in it and, you know, how we carry it and transport it. Anyhow, I was up there for quite a while. So how did that end up with the tablets being smashed? Well, Sandy, while I was up the mountain, the people got a bit bored of waiting for me. They had made themselves a golden calf to worship. 
Before I'd even come down the mountain, they'd broken some of the new laws that God had made. And so God told me to come and see what they'd done. He was ready to destroy them all and start again with me. He was so angry with them. That doesn't sound good. No. I pleaded with God for the Israelites. I reminded him that he promised Abraham, Isaac and Jacob about having lots of descendants. God did calm his anger, but he was still angry and rightly so. And the tablets? Well, when I came down, the people were dancing around this idol they'd made for themselves. I was furious with them. So I threw the tablets on the ground. The tablets had God's own hand written on both sides. God's own hand writing on them. I just threw them to the ground where they got smashed to pieces. So now you don't have them? Well, he made me some more in the end, so we do have a copy of God's Ten Rules. We just need some sort of like catchy name for them now, I think, so we can remember. Okay, well, maybe we should have a competition. If any of our viewers can think about what we could call these ten um, commandments, then please do get in touch. Oh, I think you might have got it there, Sandy. You, we call them ten commandments. That, that, that rolls off the tongue all right, doesn't it? Thanks, Sandy. And on that note, this is the end of this special edition of Kids Church News. Thanks again to Moses for coming in to tell us about God's laws and we'll see you next time. I have been Sandy Beaches. Goodbye. Goodbye, Sandy. So God gave six more rules, ten in total. Some are easier to follow than the others. Number five is to honour our parents. That means to show them respect, to learn from them and treat them well. God promised that if we do this, he will give us a long life. Next was one that most people don't find hard to keep. Do not murder. We shouldn't kill anyone. Number seven is more for the grown-ups. It says do not commit adultery. That just means that when you get married, you shouldn't fall in love with anyone else as well. Just the person that you're married to. Number eight is no stealing. If it doesn't belong to you, don't take it. Next is not to bear false witness, which just means don't tell lies. Sometimes to keep ourselves out of trouble, we might blame someone else. This is what God is saying we shouldn't do. Don't tell lies to get someone else into trouble. The last of the Ten Commandments is not to covet. Now that just means we shouldn't be jealous of what other people have got. This one can be hard. If one of your friends has a cool toy or something that you want, then you might covet it and feel jealous. We should be happy for them and not jealous. So these six commandments are all about living nicely with one another and treating each other kindly and living basically as the big family of God. If we do this, it pleases God and keeps his commandments. Let's worship God together now as we sing, dance, Praise him. Some of us are big and tall, some of us are very small, some of us like pink, and some like blue. Some of us like reading books, some of us like feeding dogs. That's because we're different, me and you. Different family.
gave to the Israelites. We should also try our best to follow these rules still now. The trouble is, keeping rules can be quite hard. We know we shouldn't run in the corridors at school or be mean to our brothers or sisters, but we sometimes still do it even though we know it's naughty. The Israelites were also like this and they broke one of God's new laws before Moses had even brought the tablets of stone down the mountain. Let's watch what happened. God's story, the Ten Commandments and the Golden Calf. So part of God's story is about one of the many times God forgave his family, and it begins like this. Remember how God chose Moses to lead his family out of slavery in Egypt? 
God wanted his family to be free and happy in the wonderful home he promised them, called Canaan. All they had to do was follow God home through the wilderness. The problem was, they kept disobeying God instead of following him. They kept trying to do things their own way. So one day, while the Israelites were on their way to Canaan, God told them what he expected from his family. Basically, how to treat each other, how to love God, and how to be part of his team. And with God on their side, the Israelites wouldn't need to worry about anything. This sounded pretty good, so Moses went up a mountain called Sinai to talk to God about it. There, God gave them 10 rules to live by, called 10 Commandments. Turns out, God had a lot more to say. He and Moses talked for 40 more days and nights. During that time, God's family got tired of waiting for their leader, so they asked Moses' brother Aaron to make them new gods to worship. But the very first commandment God had given Moses was, you must not have any other god but me. Aaron and the people had just heard that. But Aaron wanted to make the people happy more than he wanted to make God happy. So he collected all their gold, melted it down, and turned it into a calf. That's a baby cow. They worshipped the calf and said, these are the gods who brought us out of the land of Egypt. Well, God knew what was happening, and he told Moses to get back to the people. When Moses saw what they were doing, he was so angry that he smashed the Ten Commandments God had written for him on the ground. Then he burned the calf, ground it to powder, threw it into the water, and made the people drink it. Because it's a big deal when we choose to disobey God. Finally, Moses turned to Aaron and asked what happened. Aaron said, I threw their gold jewelry into the fire, and out came this calf. Even though the people disobeyed God, and even though they weren't all sorry for what they did, Moses begged God to forgive them. He reminded God how much he loved Israel. They were his special family. Of course, God did love them. And because Moses asked him to, God forgave them. See, God knew it would be impossible for his family to be perfect. That's why he sent them Moses, a leader who could show them how to follow God and remind God how much he loved his family. And for many years, God would continue to choose leaders, sometimes called prophets or judges or kings, who would tell God's family when they messed up and ask God to forgive them. Because God loves to forgive. And that's a story of forgiveness. But that's not all there is. Later, God sent his perfect son, Jesus, to rescue the whole world. He did that by taking the punishment that we deserve. Now, everyone in the whole world can become part of God's family. And one day, we'll live with him in a perfect home, joyful and free, just like God planned all along. And that's a part of God's story. So the Israelites had made an idol and also had a God above the real God. A golden calf with no power. It wasn't even living, so it didn't match up to God at all. And yet still they worshipped it. We might think that they were a silly bunch for breaking God's rules. But actually, we all do it. And then what they needed was forgiveness. Moses pleaded with God that he would forgive them. Even though both God and Moses were mad at the Israelites, Moses reminded God of the promise that he'd made to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And God said that he would forgive them and give them another chance. The fact that we can't keep God's rules and need forgiveness is the reason that Jesus had to come so that we can be forgiven. Because in reality, we're all a bit rubbish at keeping God's rules. Let's worship God again now and thank him that he forgives us.
still important today? And the answer to that question is yes. These show us 
how God wants us to live, both in relationship with him and also at peace with each other. God's rules help us to live as God planned for us to. The trouble is that all too often we want to do our own thing and so we break God's rules. God's standard for us is perfection. We can't manage this. And that is the reason that Jesus came, so that we can be forgiven and then stand before God as though we're perfect. Jesus was the only one who managed to keep all of these laws and rules. Then he died perfect, so that we can be forgiven. That means we should all try our best to follow God's rules. But when we mess up, which we will do because we're all only human, Jesus asked God to forgive us. It's similar to Moses asking God to forgive the Israelites and reminding God of his promise. Jesus reminds God that he died to take the punishment for what we've done wrong, so he's already paid for our forgiveness. Shall we pray? Dear God, thank you that you gave us rules to follow so that we can live how you want us to, but also thank you that you sent Jesus for the times we slip up and do not follow your rules properly. Help us to do our best to obey you. Help us with those commandments which we find the hardest to stick to. Thank you, God. Amen. Well, that's all we've got time for this week for this week's Kids Church. So this week, remember to try and keep God's rules. But when we mess up, Remember that we can be forgiven because of Jesus. See you all next week.
just like us. Ten Commandment Boogie, gonna dance until I die. Ten Commandment Boogie, you can do it, so can I. If you follow it through, you'll be amazed what you can do. So get your groove on with us tonight. Thank you. You're welcome.